All right, so this happened a few days ago, but I did want to wait and hold off to discuss it with you, a huge NBA fan. Danny Granger has been traded from the Indiana Pacers. That smirk says it all already. Has been traded from the Indiana Pacers to the Philadelphia 76ers. The Pacers, in return, get Evan Turner, who's actually putting up some pretty damn good numbers, 17 points per game. That was three-point percentage is way down. And LaVoy Allen, the Pacers also send, along with Granger, a second-round pick. So the Sixers have... Six second round picks, as a matter of fact, in the 2014 draft. Uh, your thoughts, very quickly. Uh, I thought it was not even quickly. Go ahead. I thought it was crazy. It might be quick. Uh, I thought it was crazy, but this is the thing. Um, after when, when when the Pacers had this huge, not even a resurgence, but this like dominating move to be so much better than already the great team that they were before. At one point, I thought I was like, wait, what happened to Danny Granger? You know, he injuries. wasn't seen. Yeah, it was injuries. Like, mm -hmm. We hadn't seen him. And I was like, but I thought, you know, you never know how long guys come back. When a guy sits that long, you tend to forget how long he's going to be out or how long he's supposed to be out or how long he's been out. So when he did come back, I was like, oh, that's right. Yeah. This is even He's a better. part of that team. Yeah, and, and then you go, oh, yeah. shit, he used to be the number one guy. Sure. So. And, until, until that Paul George fellow. Yeah. Yeah. And then so when, our mind, when, when you finally realize this, our minds are still stuck in that where he's really good. Yes. And he just got rid of this guy for a hoop. Yes. You know? But this is what I heard some, you know, so whenever I'm missing something, I'm like, someone must know better than me because that happens a lot. Um, <laughs> like Rob Ford. I forget who, I think it was maybe, no, it wasn't Charles Barkley. Some analyst was saying um, that they're looking to put pressure on Dwayne Wade in Miami with this move. And I was like, really? Is this, is, 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 uh, um, is he some kind of uh, Dwayne Wade stopper? I don't know. Or maybe they, turn. Yeah, they need some kind of like. Fair point. D is he better on defense? Is Danny Granger too slow? I don't know. Is some of his injuries destroyed him from being able to help him out and, and getting over the hump of the Miami Heat? I, maybe. So these guys do these crazy things, and obviously they've been making good moves. Yeah. I guess he had to go with it. Larry Bird has been making good moves, yeah. to be exact. Yeah. My personal feeling is we're still living in that 2009 year with Danny Granger like we know what he's capable of doing but we can't necessarily put aside what he's put out repeatedly throughout since 2009 basically uh -huh. when he was an all-star the one time all-star selection that he was and here are the numbers right now he's averaging 22 minutes per night okay so not even the best amount of minutes he's mm -hmm. coming off the bench and whatnot Evan Turner meanwhile 17 points per game six rebounds per game four assists per game for Granger 13 million dollar contract so suddenly the Pacers are freeing up money. They're signing a guy in Evan Turner who is younger, hasn't had the injury woes that uh -huh. Danny Granger has. And in the last two years, he has missed more than 100 games because of injuries. So you sort of know what you're getting with Danny Granger. And the 76ers also traded Spencer Hawes, so now they're suddenly freeing up a ton of cap space. Right. They take on the Gran Granger contract for a little bit, and then who knows if he even stays. Yeah. But we know what Danny Granger is capable of at this point. He's fragile. He's a good player. Can he get back to that level? And I, don't I guess know. I guess that's what the 76ers are betting on. Maybe he can get sure. back to it. Maybe they can keep him. Also, as you said, he could still leave. Uh, but so you bring in a guy, and maybe he thrives in being again maybe a number one, number two guy. And before he was coming off the bench, of course, of the Pacers, and it's just not him. Maybe they're going back to try and utilize him. And from the Pacers' standpoint, they know everybody's still thinking in in the 2009 mindset, and they're going. Let's get something while we can. Isn't that what it is in sports, though, when you give guys contracts? I mean, whether it's baseball or whatever sport it is, it's like, well, you know, 2005, he had a really good year. Mm -hmm. You know, in 2010, even though it's four years ago, he had like a 1.82 ERA, and he went like 18 and 12, 18 yeah. and 10. So I mean, like skills don't diminish that quickly, but just from injuries, as long as they're betting he can get over that injury. And if he gets back to what he was and they can keep him, that's not bad. And then they're going to build around, as you said, what, six second-round picks? Five. I want to correct uh -huh. myself. They have five second-round yeah. picks. Still a ton of mm -hmm. second-round picks. It seems like that's just the new CBA in basketball. Right. Because of those regulations, if you sort of bank, not bank, but if you go with the guys that make 600000 800000 you can then free up that much room to sort of sign a star player in free agency and whatnot. So they were like... Here's the thing, and I understand the Pacers move, but for me personally, I would have let it ride and mm -hmm. just say don't try to fuck up the chemistry at all at this point. Because how I relate it, they weren't going to keep Granger when it comes to the offseason. But here's how I relate it. It's a 12-round fight. You're pitching a shutout right now through 10. Uh -huh. And then you're telling your fighter to change up the style. Why? 
just stick with what's working. As of right now, I still think the Heat are going to win. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that the Pacers are not going to push them to seven win games. Win everything or just win the East? You think the anyone Heat. has a chance? The Heat, the they're going to win it all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I'm not skeptical at all of them not going to the NBA Finals, bare minimum. But for me personally, it's like you're telling, you're telling your fighter to change his style in the 10th round when he's pitching a shutout. Why? Why not hang on to him? Look, you got Evan Turner for the long run. Mm-hmm. Sure. But, like, Paul George put out an Instagram post, like, I love you, bro. You're my mentor. Like, I'm going to miss the shit out of you and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Like, not verbatim, but he was like, right. you know, I'm, I'm not sure he'd ever say shit in an Instagram post. He's a good dude. But it just, like, it seems like to me that they're fucking up the chemistry for no reason. I, I, and that's the thing. I wanted to what degree. But they're getting something in return, and, obviously. Yeah, and I guess. Nothing, um, instead of nothing. I guess uh, uh, Paul George's tweet kind of pointed out what the chemistry could have been. Like, people may think on the surface, oh, the guy plays 22 minutes recently. He had the injuries. Uh, he's not what he used to be. But he called uh, this and that. Danny Granger his mentor. Right. So that's where the chemistry that maybe all of us don't see on the surface could have been. He's been, in the, he's been on the team for a long time, mm-hmm. obviously. So even though he's not the same starter that he was before, he still has an effect on that team. And people don't notice that until you're inside that locker room. By the way, the Heat are one game back as of right now. And the Pacers have dropped, I think, two of the last five, three of the last five. Uh, I think three of the last five, something like that. So do you think the Pacers, now with Evan Turner, can go to the NBA Finals? I thought they could before that. But now, I mean, again, I, we're going to have to see how he blends in with this team. Because also, I was watching the Warriors game last night. This is somewhat of a side Great game. game. When how, how Great Steve game. Blake came into that team now. And then some of the Laker players, I, heard, I saw Gasol and uh, Kobe were kind of like, ah, losing my guy Steve Blake. Yeah, that was and them sticking thinking, up for the team. And everybody's right. thinking, well, they kind of got, not garbage, but it was, it was a good move for they them. They got Kent Bazemore. Yeah. It was, it was a good move, I think, for Golden State. But the guys have to point out how they liked their guy, and you know, and he took off and went somewhere else. Yeah. He has a chance now. At least totally. To have a, you know, we know how the Lakers. Yeah, look, like Steve Blake's thirty-five. Right. Like, there's no point in keeping him. Thirty-three.